from newsounds.org. This is our live performance series called Soundcheck, streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. I'm John Schaefer. Heather Woods Broderick, like most musicians, spends a lot of time out on the road. More than most, actually, because she not only tours with her own music, she's also a touring member of Sharon Van Etten's band and has in the past toured with the Danish synth-pop group Efterklang and numerous others. But she's recently released an album, her third, of her own songs. It's called Invitation. It's full of dreamy, atmospheric music, and Heather has brought her trio into our studio today to play some of it. This first song is called I Try.
The song is called I Try. Heather Woods Broderick at our piano and, of course, singing lead with uh, Andrew Carlson uh, playing the bass, backing vocals, and the sampler. And uh, behind our drum kit here in the studio, Jason Lawrence. Heather, it's great to have you with us with the trio today. Thank you. It's great to be here. And, you know, since it is just the three of you, um, the songs are kind of, they're a little scaled back from what they are on the record where, you know, that song by the end is full of kind of a wash of almost orchestral sound. And hearing it this way, I, it didn't occur to me before, but if you just listen to the piano part of I Try, it's almost got like a, a American folk kind of quality to it, which you yeah. know y- you wouldn't think listening to the, the song on the record. It, it's almost like a different, I don't know, it has like different sounds, different overtones to it somehow. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I wrote it just um, just on the piano, so I guess in its most pure form. Um, it comes from a very, you know, basic chord structure, and yeah. I, I could I could see that, yeah. Um, there's a video for that song, which is full of this kind of dreamlike imagery, and which is connected to an earlier video that you did for the song White Tail. Are the songs connected as well? The songs are not really connected. Um, that was more of like uh, something that we did to... to Vi- visuals are a really important part of any any sort of um, soundscape project that I'm working on, and so I wanted to um, make sure there were visuals to support sort of like the underlying theme of the record. So those those songs aren't necessarily connected, but um, the visuals sort of tie tie the whole thing together. Okay, so uh, let me follow up on two words in your answer. The first is soundscape. Mm-hmm. So do you see this album as a kind of, you know, musical landscape and an audio landscape? I do, yeah. I, I, I feel like that's sort of a, a one common thread through all of the music that I've made. For me, I, I like to sort of create this bed of sound and, um, for, you know, for the songs to live in, so... So the the previous record Glider had a song called Wyoming. Mm-hmm. There was another about the desert, and yeah. so uh, you know, even if they're not in one place, they all seem to have a sense of place. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then the other word that you used was uh, thematic. So w- w- something is tying this album together for you, other than the fact that they're all your songs. W- right. What is that? Well. Let me see if I can describe it without going on a rant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was spending a lot of time... These songs don't sound like the songs of a ranter or raver. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you spend enough time alone, you know, your mind <laughs> does weird things with time and you can sort of lose track. But I was spending a lot of time alone on the Oregon coast working on these songs and I wasn't in... Um, it, it sort of changed throughout the period of a couple years that I was working, but toward the first half of that period of time, I wasn't really in the, the best, uh, most positive headspace. Um, and the whole span of a couple of years was sort of like me working through whatever I needed to work through to get out of that. And um, being alone uh, and spending time in a place, sur- I was surrounded by a beautiful landscape and you know, a s- the Oregon coast is very sparsely populated. So when I would be out for walks and things, I would my most of my interactions were just with animals and <laughs> and and like the living things that are existing on the Oregon coast, whether it be like seaweed washing in the waves or you know uh, lots of deer, seals, um, huh. rabbits, wild rabbits and stuff. Isn't is it is it the Oregon coast that has those weird like dolmen like? rock structures yeah there's a whole series of they're called the haystack rocks uh, Mm -hmm. that go down the coast i think they start pretty far north i think just maybe below astoria some somewhere and they astoria is like the famous goonies um Ah. town and then there's a series of haystack rocks and one of them i think one of uh, maybe the but the biggest one is in pacific city and that's where i live so um anyway to get back to, to what i was saying I, I sort of, because I was spending so much time alone in my thoughts and having these, for me, what were like pretty prolific experiences with nature, 
um, I sort of felt like I was existing in this fairy tale land. And um, I sort of took that theme and ran with it a bit because, you know, fairy tales are filled with lots of darkness. Yeah. Um, but there's also, th- there, there's both. There's the dark and the light and the fairy tale always. So, um, and that's just, it was kind of how I was feeling in my life at that moment. Um, so when we went to make the videos and it, we were making the mood board and things f- for the, for the, for the videos, I was using a lot of imagery that I had been seeing on the Oregon coast and or maybe that I had been dreaming about and yeah. things like that. And to sort of create this sort of fairy tale, um, yeah, scene, scenery. Well, and, and, you know, the album is kind of full, even apart from the videos. Mm-hmm. Um, before I ever saw the White Tail or the, the I Try video, the, the album has that kind of dreamlike quality to it. Um, perhaps most explicitly in uh, the song that we heard just a tiny bit of at the top of the session, uh, These Green Valleys, where there's a line about dreaming that your teeth are falling out. Right, yeah. I mean, I, I assume you've had that dream. I have had that dream, yeah. You know, I, there, that, is, that is a dream that goes across cultures, uh, yeah. that people around the world, yeah. throughout history, have, I mean, it, it must be something really kind of primal. Yeah. And I don't know what it means, but, you know, I mean, we're mammals, and I guess losing our teeth is... Oh, you need, well... They, they're very helpful for survival. Yes. I don't know. Yes, you probably absolutely. don't need them, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's so, you know, that that's kind of like it was just a, a striking little turn of phrase yeah. in, in the middle of that song. I heard, I don't know if this is more of a modern interpretation, but I've, I've heard that's just uh, like stress manifesting, stress and anxiety manifesting itself in your dreams. I've also heard that it's just y- you're grinding your teeth and this uh-huh. is how it shows up right. in your dreams. <laughs> yeah. But then it could be the opposite, that you're dreaming that and right. so you start, so you yeah. know, who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Fun stuff to talk about, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> So the album's called Invitation. It's been four years since Glider. Um, and you've spent those four years not just on the Oregon coast, but touring around and yeah, I living toured, the life of a working musician, right? Yeah, I, I toured a lot less over the course of the last few years. Um, so for there was a period of time where I wasn't touring at all, but I, I did do some some tours with other musicians in between. And for me, it felt like I was just at home forever you know I, I was just <laughs> not used to being in one place at all um I, I probably was still traveling twice as much as the, the average person but for me it felt like um I was very stationary mm. <laughs> yeah so uh, does it normally take I mean it seems like four or five years it's been between each of your records yeah I think that's because because of the work that I do with other musicians, okay. um, mostly, and and actually, I'm I'm not one of those musicians that writes really quickly. It takes me a while to to put a record together, and I don't overwrite for a record. I don't have I don't have ten extra songs. There are no there were sessions. no Heather Woods Broderick basement tapes. I mean, there's a few songs floating around here and there, but. I hope it's. I hope someday that I have the time and space to build up more of a catalog like that. All right. We're speaking with he- Heather Woods Broderick and uh, hearing her and her band playing some live songs from the album called Invitation, which uh, came out just less than a month ago. Uh, this next song is on it. You want to play Nightcrawlers? Yeah. All right. Once again, Heather Woods Broderick.
Once again, Heather Woods Broderick and her trio performing live here in the studio in a song called Nightcrawler, which appears on the new album, Invitation. I think I said Nightcrawlers plural before, Ah. which would be a very different kind of song (laughs) about fishing, bait bait and tackle (laughs) and stuff like that. (laughs) Whereas this song... um, did you write this song during the uh, the solar eclipse that passed across North America? What was it, the summer of 2017? Yeah, there, that, I could see, I, w- I live in the path of totality, ah. like the town that I was living in, Pacific City. So um, I sat on my deck and watched the, watched the whole thing. Wow. Yeah. That's it was incredible. <laughs> I, I was not in the path of totality, but I, uh, close enough that it was still a, like a really remarkable day. And yeah. I, I just wondered what it might be like to be in that. I mean, it, it really gets, did it get like nighttime? It or? was chilling. I mean, I, I, I guess I felt like I had seen one before, but what I was remembering was just being a kid and seeing partial eclipses. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, I didn't really get what all the hype was about, actually. And then <laughs> and we sat down to watch it, and it was the the it got dark. the The birds stopped chirping. That's what I was going to ask. What what happened to the animals? Yeah. Yeah, they went completely silent. The temperature dropped. Like I don't know, I don't know how many degrees, but I had to put like a coat on. Wow. And it just everything just got completely quiet. That is so cool. Yeah. Um, and now part of that song called Nightcrawler. Um, again, on the record, you have these kind of lush orchestrations. Whose orchestra- Whose arrangements are those? Do you do those yourself? I didn't do them. Um, on A Stilling Wind, which was the first song on the record, um, a man named Danny Bensey did the string arrangement. He's an incredibly talented um, player as well as arranger. And um, I was introduced to him through a good friend of mine, Jesse Marchant, is also a songwriter and has worked with him a lot. Um, and I always admired the string arrangements that he had done for Jesse's records. So um, he did that one for A Stilling Wind and then another really talented arranger um, and composer out of Portland, Oregon named Ryan Francisconi um, mm. did the string arrangements for the other three. Um, and I had players in Portland perform those ones. Right. Yeah. Now, do you have uh, sort of classical training in your background? I do. I started taking piano lessons when I was eight years old. Um, and, I mean, I don't know if you can say classical piano when you're eight, you know, yeah. but it was it was that theory. And uh, I went on to study it through high school and, and into college, actually, yeah. as well. So Now, y- your brother Peter Broderick mm-hmm. is... Uh, well-known, you know, singer, songwriter, musician as well. Also played with Efterklang, the Danish <laughs> band, right? Did, were you in the band together at any point? F- briefly. Uh, he was first, and mm-hmm. uh, I showed up, I think, a, c- a couple years after he started. Yeah. And then once his big sister showed up, he was out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what about your parents? I mean, are you from a musical family? We are, yeah. My parents um, were both... N- 
musicians. My my mom uh, plays guitar and flute, and my dad plays guitar and uh, a bit of fiddle as well. Um, they met playing music. My my mother was doing a weekly open mic night in Bellingham, Washington, and my dad uh, was going to see this open mic night every night, and um, she thought she. <laughs> this is a cute story. She thought that she had made it because she was making so much money in the tip jar every night, and then she found out that my dad was stuffing it. <laughs> so, so yeah, they they're both um, really amazing musicians. They don't play so much anymore, but it's it was a huge part of my upbringing, and yeah, uh, yeah we always had music in the house, and they were always really supportive and encouraging. So. Uh Peter doesn't use his middle name. You do, Heather Woods Broderick. What, what's the, the, what was underlying that decision? Just trying to make my life difficult with <laughs> okay. having an extremely long <laughs> name now. I don't know. Um, I tried to, I actually wanted to call my project Woods from the time it started, but I, then, you know, there's always already that band called Woods that are really successful and well known so I couldn't do that uh. and then it went through like a couple different incarnations and then finally I just thought I should just yeah that's yeah. my whole name it works for you there's also a woman who's an actress and maybe a musician named Heather Broderick so I think oh. when I saw that I thought maybe I should use my middle yeah. name so yeah. it differentiates it a little bit like you know, there's the opera composer John Adams, the Nixon and China guy, yeah. and then there's John Luther Adams, right. who uses Luther for exactly that reason. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, now you know, on the record, your voice seems to be kind of like part of the texture of the song. Do you do you do you see it that way, or you know, do do you want it to be sort of on another? kind of level of, of listening? It's funny that you mentioned that because um, I get, you know, I sing with so many other people as well, and every time I sing with someone, they say, and it, I'm always very flattered, and it's a very nice thing, nice compliment to get, but they, they always, people always say to me, wow, your voices just blend so seamlessly, you know, and and I think I feel like I maybe just have this sort of airy quality in my voice that makes it blend with things. Yeah. And f maybe for that reason, it sort of sits in my own music like that as well. Um, it's not an intentional choice. A and actually, with this latest record, it was an intentional choice to sort of bring it at least more forward in mm. the mix and... Um, so that we could hear the lyric hear about the, lyrics the and dream of losing your teeth and yeah, all exactly. that kind of fun <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, we're speaking with Heather Woods Broderick. The album is called Invitation. Uh, and uh, so the, this next song, um, we're kind of going in like the same order of the album, right? We've heard tracks two, three, and now we'll hear track four. That is true. I didn't <laughs> even think about that. <laughs> uh, Where I Lay is the name of it. Now, on the record... This song begins with something that sounds like a harmonium. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? It's actually um, piano played and some and and sort of reversed and affected. Oh, um, flipped wow. around, upside down and sideways, and stitched together in Pro Tools. <laughs> okay, yeah. it, it does a very good job of imitating that kind of pump organ uh -huh. harmonium yeah. sound. Yeah. and by the end of the song, you've got layers of your voice that. To me, you know, as a fan of Kate Bush, remind me of her music. I don't mm -hmm. know if she's at all a person that you've had in your mind's ear. Yeah. Um, her record, Essential World, was... Um, I was l halfway through writing this record. I, f I found that record of hers, and I, I first heard the song The Rocket's Tale, and... From that, I just it was the only thing I listened to for the next <laughs> four ah. months or something like that. So, yeah, huge influence. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you don't have access to all the many layers of your voice here, so no. Let's... But we did bring the um, harmonium-like sounding sample. The, the little so, sample. Yeah. Okay. You can, you so Andrew that. will start us off with that. Uh, the song is called "Where I Lay." Once again, it's from Heather Woods Broderick. Thank you. 
day after staring into the sun. I saw the imprint of this burned into the backs of my song is called Where I Lay from Heather Woods Broderick with uh, Andrew Carlson on bass, backing vocals and sampler, Jason Lawrence playing our drum kit, and of course Heather herself singing and uh, it seems thoroughly enjoying our Steinway piano here in the studio. Very much so. (laughs) (laughs) The life of a touring pianist must be difficult. You uh, you can't take your instrument with you, right? You cannot, no. <laughs> and unfortunately, a lot of, I mean, you know, piano is, isn't is isn't the most popular instrument um, to have sitting around in a nightclub. Right, right. So, so uh, well, you know, these songs sounded great on our Steinway here today. They sound great on the new record, which is called Invitation. Heather, it's great having you here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. This is Soundcheck.